Hello everyone, I'm Ashley Meredith with Mouse Belt University. We're back with another university segment with professors Stan Heister and Christy Uthis at Portland State University where I actually used to teach as a philosophy professor two years ago before I got into blockchain. Uh, thank you for joining us folks. Uh, how are you two doing today? <laughs> Great, Ashley. Thanks for having us. This is really exciting. Doing really well, Ashley. Thanks. Yeah, excited to be here with my uh, fellow Portland State uh, uh, professors. Um, so we've been talking in the past about uh, what you guys are doing at Portland State. You have a certificate program uh, open and available to anyone. Uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit about that first. And then I know you wanted to do a presentation on how business students can get more involved in blockchain. Great. So, right. So we just started it this year. So we've got six full courses, which we'll talk about in our presentation, but yeah, six academic courses that make up a certificate and you can take them individually or you can take all six and earn the, earn the certificate. Um, they're fully online. They're high touch. So we do a lot of kind of Zoom meetings and a lot of interaction with student to student and with the faculty and we have a lot of expert guests that join us and, and work with our students. There's internship opportunities, um, all kinds of community engagement opportunities. And yeah, we're really proud of the way this program has worked out. So it's for undergrad students, grad students, and also community members can join. There's kind of a quick admit process it, for people who are not earning a degree. So they get in-state tuition, they get quickly admitted, and they can join the courses too. So we've had some really great, um, you know, working experts in our classes this year. So that's been enriching for everyone. Yeah, and it's really unique, actually, in that it's it's focused on the business student. You can you can see a lot of schools around have CS-oriented courses around blockchain, but it's really the business students that are ultimately going to kind of drive how this how this plays out in, in business across the country and across the world. Yeah, I think that's so great that it's also available to uh, non-matriculated community members as well. Uh, you know, really goes with our philosophy at Mouse Belt University that the only way that innovation is going to happen in blockchain is if we have more education, more access to that education. So I love that this is open to everybody uh, and I'm excited to share more information about it with our viewers uh, through your presentation. Great. Yeah. Thank you, Ashley. So should we begin? Yeah, go ahead and uh, share your screen. <clears throat> Is that shared now? Yep. <clears throat> so do you want to put it in presentation mode, Christy? Oh, so, sure. so that we don't see the slides on the left. Got it. How's that? That's perfect. Okay. Excellent. So I'm going to, yeah, so I'm going to just kind of interview Christy, as I mentioned. I'm not sure how quite how to start that off, but uh, so I'll do that. Um, introduce myself and Christy, introduce you, or you can introduce yourself and then we'll just kind of get into it. All right. Uh, thanks for having us. Uh, thanks for having us, Ashley. And uh, Christy and I want to talk a little bit about the program we have at Portland State University the blockchain and the B school program, as it were. Uh, I'm gonna to talk to Christy a little bit about the program. We're both co-directors and also instructors in the blockchain business certificate program. Um, so I wanted to get Christy's take on some of the reason that we launched this program and some of the benefits that it has had for our students and will continue to have as we, we continue to roll it out uh, into next year as well. Uh, so Christy, if I can ask you, uh, you've got the slide here, blockchain in the B school. Um, so I assume this is a, a program for business students. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> so this is an unusual program. Um, when we started this, we couldn't find anything else in business schools. Occasionally there was a course here and there on uh, like FinTech or cryptocurrency, but really nothing about sort of business strategy and how to actually create value with all this fantastic new technology that's being developed. Um, and so we really wanted to figure out, you know, if we created a full business program, what would it include and what would it involve? And so we started out blind. There wasn't really much going on. And we think we created a really fantastic program. So 
we wanted to share that with other schools so that and the students have pushed their schools to create business programs like this. Um, so we're just going to talk about, you know, why, why would you want blockchain in the business school? Which, yeah, brings me to the next question is, yeah, who needs it? So uh, who needs to learn about the business of blockchain? So um, a lot of people need to learn about it. So there, there are some ways online to learn. So there's some small courses. Um, there's a course out of INSEAD, a little business course. So there's some, some ways to get kind of a taste of it, but really nothing at the kind of depth that is needed. And so, uh, so first, business students, of course. So Stan, maybe you can pick this up because you've been in the business world as a professional for a lot longer. I've been a professor for my pretty much my whole life. So <laughs> yeah, we. We feel like it's very interesting for business students in particular to drive uh, the adoption, uh, wide scale adoption of, of blockchain technologies. So, you know, you can create uh, the blockchain from an engineering perspective, but it's got to solve a business problem. And so we're training uh, what would be future blockchain business analysts, solution architects, project managers, product managers, those who are going to see the need specifically for their use case within their company. So we feel like it's the business person that's going to drive this adoption, that's going to see where the value add is, wherever it is in the value chain, and then be able to uh, initiate programs. And then, of course, bring in engineering to understand, you know, how, exactly how to build it out. But it's the, it's the business students. And, you know, we've heard this through a lot of our board members as well. We'll get into talking about who's on our board and, uh, and later on. But uh, we're hearing a big need. Uh, in the community, and if you if you look at uh, places like LinkedIn, which which called blockchain, you know the the biggest uh, search I think right now out there for 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 tough technologies is is blockchain. So we're seeing a big need for it in the in the business community out there. Right, and so um, and among our students too, you know we've had we kind of started out with some students from accounting. So we had an earlier blockchain course before this program started, and some students went directly into uh, blockchain in their accounting jobs. And so they, they were like flying around teaching the C-suite about blockchain. I mean, they, we, they saw a need immediately in accounting, but in every area of business. And so we've got students in the program who are in supply chain, for example. And, you know, if you've been following blockchain, you know, that that's like a, a huge area. And we've got masters of finance students interested in the fintech side. Um, marketing is big. One of our partners, it was Brave early on who, you know, big into blockchain marketing opportunities. And so every business student is going to be affected by blockchain eventually. And so we really wanted to get them familiar with blockchain, what it can do while they're still students so they can sort of drive the adoption of technology within their, within their companies. Yeah, we, we don't necessarily think that every student's going to be come out and work for a blockchain company, so to speak. We actually think that probably more of our students will end up in a in a company working in the supply chain area, but with a blockchain expertise that can be very useful. So, Christy, you also have we're talking about um, business students, but also we see the need for even engineering and CS students in in this program. Why do you why do you see it that way? Well, okay, so there are more opportunities for business for computer science and engineering students. There are courses available. We've got some great rigorous courses uh, at Portland State in the computer science department, but, um, and there's just a huge amount of great tech innovation. It's just that those students also need to understand or they can benefit from understanding kind of the business side of blockchain. You know, these markets are really competitive, even new markets, even new technologies, you know, they, they're competing against incumbent technologies and they're competing against each other and so they really have to think about so you can develop the pure technologies but then you have to think about how that technology can create long-term value in the marketplace and so just a little bit even one kind of comprehensive business course that's focused on blockchain can take you a long way in terms of moving your idea forward whether you're going to be in a startup or whether you're going to be a tech um, employee at a large company that's thinking about blockchain, that just that business knowledge that you can gain, uh, you know, in even one course or in the whole certificate can get you a long way ahead in terms of what your technical skills can do for you and for your, for your organization. 
Excellent. And then there's kind of a third uh, population of students that uh, that you think are interesting for for this particular program. Ashley alluded to it a little bit earlier, the non-matriculated type of student that uh, isn't necessarily seeking a university degree. Yeah, and so, so both tech and business professionals can also benefit from taking these courses. So we weren't really expecting it, as I said, but we got quite a few um, professionals, two consultants, somebody who ultimately started a blockchain uh, company, we've got blockchain, uh, other, uh, uh, like a VP of a pharmaceutical. So some really high powered community members, even people who had been consulting in blockchain came into our program and just the kind of, uh, the kind of breadth and depth that you can get in a course like this or a program like this is really different than you can get. You know, you see a very narrow piece of the world when you're working on your own, in your own business, your own industry, or your own area of tech. Um, but this gives you a much broader understanding of what's happening. And so, and also, you know, what it's really done is allowed the technical and the business people to work together and talk together. I mean, we had to go through that as professors, as business professors working with the computer science department and developing some of this program. Um, and with our, you know, IT professionals that are on our board, you know, there was a lot that we didn't really understand about how these two sides could integrate. And so, you know, we can see that it's really beneficial for everyone to, to kind of get together and be able to speak the same language as they move these technologies forward. Yeah, and these, these, these students that uh, you're alluding to, these you know, people coming out of industry, they, they, they add a ton of value to uh, our college and uh, university students because they may not have as much experience in the real world. So there's a tremendous amount of value add bringing those folks in as well. So uh, Christy, why university course instead of say just your typical, there's a lot of courses out there that you can take that are that are passive learning courses uh, where you're watching videos, et cetera, and, um, and they're, they're aimed at uh, different blockchain solutions or use cases. Uh, what, what makes the university program different? Well, and Stan, there's even university courses out of you know, Oxford, MIT. There are sort of in-person, you can do some synchronous learning and um, integrate with classmates in these sort of non, uh, non-accredited non-traditional university courses. So these certificates, kind of these external certificates, and it's just really not the same thing. You know, if you've been a university student, you might think back and remember the kind of depth that you get in your courses. Um, let me just show you this next slide. So there's just a lot more rigor. So we're, we're very rigorous in terms of the theories. I mean, there's a lot of business framework and theories that are really relevant to this space. And so we get into depth on those, we do really in-depth applied projects that make you think through each step and you know, how are you gonna operationalize? How, we have students create white papers, for example, for business ideas. I mean, they have to think through every aspect in a, in a very different way than you will if you're taking just a one-off online um, course, even from a great university. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that and we've taken some ourselves uh, Stan and I when we were first learning, but um, university courses just aren't replaceable. So in our program, we're able to have in-person discussions with experts. We do a lot of Zoom meetings, even though we're online, um, but we get together quite a lot. And then also the context. So understanding either the technology side or the business side alone is fine, but really we get into the broader context. So there are a lot of, for example, political issues associated with this space. Um, but in addition, you know, they're like the COVID-19 has really um, come to the fore right now. And so we talk about that a lot you now in our classes because they're trying to get some blockchain applications into place up and running in the COVID for both for supply chain and for tracking the, the virus. You know, there are a lot of challenges that can be understood better when you really understand the full social, economic, political, consequences and even environmental forces that are driving technology and that will be influenced by the technologies that are created. And so being able to get that big deep picture that a university program can provide is also beneficial we think. And then uh, finally the creativity that's required of you. I mean we really require our students to in one course they have to come up with a, an idea for a blockchain startup 
you know, and they have to work through the whole entire process of how that would work, who the competition is, what their strengths and weaknesses are, um, you know, how to enter the market, where you can get funding, you know, all kinds of things that just really force you to be creative in your thinking about, you know, what can work, how can I make this thing work if I were to really do this. And, you know, you just can't get that. If, if you don't have a professor forcing you to turn in your project on Saturday night, midnight, you know, you're just not going to do that kind of in-depth studying and work on your own, typically. Yeah, and in our capstone course, we actually have an interesting project, too, where they look into their own particular um, area of study and look in depth at how that area of study could be impacted by, by blockchain. So if you're in accounting, you know, what, what are the disruptions in the accounting industry that I have to be aware of as somebody entering that industry, which is a huge uh, project and a really very nicely applied uh, project for when they graduate. Right. So, and why blockchain for business? We covered a little bit of this already, but specifically for business students rather than, not that engineers can't benefit from this as we've already discussed, but this is a blockchain for business program. You know, and businesses in general who employ uh, lots of engineers and developers. So here's the first point. So technology is moving really quickly. There are just so many fabulous innovations in this space. And if you've, if you've been paying attention at all, you've seen a lot of it. I mean, every day there's something new. You know, it's a new consensus mechanism, new ways to speed things up, new platforms, new ways to interoperability solutions, all kinds of great stuff is happening. Um, and, but adoption is really slow. You can see from this graph, according to the Gartner group. Um, so blockchain in 2017 was small. Um, every, we, all of us who were in the space expected it, it to grow a lot more quickly. Um, you know, and Gartner's projecting that eventually in 20, 10 years from now, you know, there really be uh, adoption and value extraction from this technology, but, but it's moving slowly. And we believe that it's because business people do not understand the value of this technology yet. They just really don't understand even what it is and what it can do for businesses. Some people have never even heard of blockchain outside of Bitcoin still, even in major companies. And so there's a lot of knowledge lacking on the business side. Um, you know, and these people who are really advanced in the technology just can't explain it in business terms that the business people can get. So Stan, you want me to just continue with these? Yeah, I guess to just note briefly as well is that, that what we're, what we're, one of the things we're attempting to do with our business, business students is to provide kind of a missing link. And right now we have, you know, the business professionals and leadership out there, and then you've got engineering fo folks. And a lot of times they, they have a difficult time coming together, you know, discussing because the business people may, may not know enough about the technology to have an intelligent conversation with an, with an engineer and then vice versa. The engineers might not understand enough about business process or business models to have that conversation as well. We're trying to provide this missing link where the students understand the technology, but they also understand how it applies to business. Right, and so that's kind of what this slide's saying. This is more from the business perspective, you know, from a business person's perspective, you know, they need to know where, where that value is being created. It can be economic value, it can be creating revenues for some company, but also, you know, social value for governmental applications, for example, or nonprofit applications, or what value is created by this technology. Um, and what are the environmental, social impacts, economic impacts more generally of what this technology can provide and specific implementations will do. And so the business people have a better understanding of that kind of thing, but they're not able to communicate it to the tech side. So they might be very clear about why or why not this a particular technology can create actual you know, revenue producing opportunities, but they can't explain it well to the tech side. So uh, on both sides, there's sort of this failure, as Stan said, to really understand what's happening on the other side. And that's one of the reasons we think that the technology is not being adopted as quickly as it could be and not uh, producing these in really important and valuable changes that it can. Right, and one thing that, you know, so we, when you have business models, entire huge business models and, and, and revenue models and the way you monetize things and, and, and the disruption that's occurring, um, that's kind of what you're getting into. And, and, and it's, a, it's, if you think about the next slide, it's, 
you know, companies have to think about business in an entirely different way. It's uh, as the next slide says, it's a team sport. Right, and, and companies are just not used to working together in the way that blockchains allow and require in the in an ecosystem sort of perspective. So there's trade associations and there's joint ventures and mergers and things like that, but um, actually trying to understand how an entire supply chain or how an entire a set of financial institutions or what have you can extract value while they maintain privacy, how they can share data, where they can all get value from, from this shared ecosystem, how to govern these things, but not just the, you know, the governance within the platforms, but the governance in the ecosystem. You know, how is the risk shared? How are the expenses shared? How are the data shared? How are the, uh, you know, all, all the resources that are generated through these things shared? You know, it's, it's, it's really hard to get a new um, stand worked in, um, you know, in database technology for a long time. It's really hard to just get one new system up and running in, in one lone company. And so trying to get a whole bunch of systems coordinated, the tech side, the strategy side, the operations, all coming together to make these blockchains work, it's difficult. And so you know, that's an area that's, that's really slowed things down. And that's an area that we can really make advances in through good education. Yeah, that's the, the whole ecosystem and, and the way we do business and think about doing business is changing. And, you know, part, or people who were adversaries in the past may have to uh, enter into these co opetition kind of partnerships. And I think that's kind of the way uh, these things are going to shake out in the end. Right. And, and you know, the technology side, they can understand that really easily. And the business side, we're afraid of that still. We're just used to very limited cooperation and a lot of competition. It just blockchain just does, breaks that apart in in new ways that are that are exciting and scary and risk risky and valuable all at the same time. So, Christy, okay. why don't you tell me a little bit more about specifically the Portland State and then the Business Blockchain Certificate Program? Okay, great. And so, because of all those reasons that we talked about, we started this blockchain. Uh, program at Portland State. So let me just tell you a little bit about it. Um, you can get all the information here at our website. Um, so here's the basics. Stan, you can, you can jump in here. So Stan's a co-professor in, in the program. So. Yeah, so I mean, you can cover it as well, but the, it's an it's a entire certificate program. It includes six courses. I think we talked about they're all online. Three of the courses are four credit courses. We run on terms here at Portland State. They're 10 week terms. So in the fall, you have a four credit and then, and then a two credit lab that goes along with that. Those are the foundation courses. Maybe, that we, maybe I can show this while you're talking. It's, it's yeah, kind of absolutely. So there's, there's, there's the stack right there. There's our architectural stack, if you will, uh, where we have a boot camp that kind of gets everybody up to speed. Um, you know, everyone up to a certain level, because if you're bringing in students from outside and they're professionals in business, we're not exactly sure, you know, what their acumen is. The boot camp is designed to get everybody up to a certain level with regard to knowledge around blockchain and, and what those technologies are about. And then we go into the fall and again, like I said, we've got a four credit and a two credit class in each of the terms, each of the three terms. Uh, three of them are lab oriented where they get a lot of hands on and Christy, you can go into that a little bit more detail. Uh, and then three of them are more um, traditional classrooms. Okay, so let me just go back up for one second. So, right, um, and this high touch is really important. So we, we get a lot of students, so we have a lot of students that are on campus and we have a lot of students that are off campus. Um, the on campus students will come together and, you know, in a room and we'll be Zooming with experts. Sometimes the experts are there in person or quite often because we've got a lot in Portland, and as you might know in this space, the experts are incredibly generous. You've seen this throughout this conference. I'm sure they're incredibly generous with their expertise and time. So, um, you know, so that makes this a really nice program. So we've got undergrads and grads, and as we said at the beginning, there's a quick admit process for professionals. You can just get admitted within a couple of days, it's cheap. Um, and then once you're admitted, then you pay in-state tuition for the courses. Okay. So we'll go into the details a little bit on each of the terms. I think we're running um, short on time, but we've got a lot of this information out on our website as well. So in the first term, we focus on fundamentals. So we've got the boot camp before you start, and then fundamentals include things like 
because you can read your decentralization, consensus cryptography, all that kind of stuff, what smart contracts are and can do, what kind of tokens uh, there are. And then we think about the application stack, but from the more from an enterprise perspective, really. Um, and we think about scalability and interoperability issues. And then also we get into, we start getting into use cases and value creation right from the beginning. So we're doing both the tech and the business in every class right from the beginning. And then um, many of our students have never had a coding class before they start this program. And that's fine, it's designed for those people. So in the fundamentals lab, we go through coding basics. And so people understand how coding works, are not afraid of coding, and then they get into you know, coding smart contracts and solidity. This is a picture of crypto zombies. Some of you might be familiar with. We, we do, after the coding basics, we do some crypto zombies and then jump into some more yeah, in-depth coding. In the second term, we focus more directly on business. Now that we've got the fundamentals out of the way, <clears throat> so we think about new business models, new business strategies, how businesses and industries are being disrupted by these new innovations, how they, um, how they sometimes absorb these new innovations. We talk about the governance of these systems and the governance of the ecosystems that are created when companies come together with these blockchains. And then uh, we talk a lot about creating business value, creating ecosystem value, social value, um, managing the risks and um, building the ethics in because you know, it's really critical. Anytime you're coding, you're building in your own ethical perspectives. Maybe not on purpose, but that's what's happening and they get baked in right from the beginning. So we really want students who are going to be engaged in this space to be able to think through the ethical implications as they're creating the technologies in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, Stan, go ahead. No, go ahead. You finish off the business. The, uh, business okay. Awesome. Yeah. And then in the business lab, so we start with the database foundation and business process foundations because most businesses have databases and you know you need to learn how to map out and really understand the basic business processes going on yeah and work a little just, with database software sorry i can just add to that a little bit christy is it's it's fundamentally different the difference between a, a blockchain database if you want to even want to call it that and traditional databases so uh, we spend quite a bit of time getting the students up to speed of what databases are about and what they're used for and why blockchain can solve a problem that a traditional database can't solve. So then, then we get into things like actually building out blockchains, uh, thinking about the monetary policy that you might employ if you're building a blockchain, how many tokens do you need, those sorts of things. Um, the students get to build out smart contracts and, and then they build out their first app in that course as well. Mm -hmm. And in that uh, course, we, we use um, simulated software that they can play around with that functions like a real blockchain and we use kind of more more sort of plug and play that's designed at a higher level so that you can see what the, the software really does rather than getting into the weeds. Um, but then in the third term, then we do get down into depth into the interworkings of these things. And so um, right now they're using Azure Workbench to create um, smart contracts and depth. So there we, we think a lot about business uses, um, so again, we go through process analysis and try to design solutions for specific business problems. And then students are building and deploying contracts and dApps that they have, uh, some that we walk them through or a lot that we walk them through, and then some that they create and design and imagine on their own. And then finally, we've got an emerging issues course. It's a small course, two credits, but anything that we weren't able to cover, the, this technology moves so quickly, as you know, and so, you know, what we start out thinking we're going to teach at the beginning of the year, lots of things have changed by the end, so we can pick up all those issues, changes in technology, um, and changes in sort of application issues as well. Um, yeah, it's important to cover those emerging technologies because, as you say, things do change very quickly, even from the fall when we we're doing the fundamentals course to now when we're doing this course. A lot of things have changed in blockchain. You know, off-chain is just just one of them. How do we speed this thing up? How do we get our transactions per second per second up to where they need to be to make this successful? So we're seeing a lot of that evolution in blockchain. So 
We wanted to make sure that the students walk away at the end of the third term with the most recent information and watching. Yeah, so we're updating the program in real time all the time as we go. Um, so here's the faculty, uh, not, to, not because anybody specific is important, but I just wanted to show you that we have business faculty, we have computer science faculty, and we have IT professionals, working professionals, both in blockchain and in larger organizations in the blockchain area that are participating in teaching these courses. Most of the courses, well, all the courses this year were co-taught, which is great because you can get different perspectives from uh, professionals and business professors and BS professors at the same time. Um, we've got a fantastic board mm -hmm. who's heavily involved in keeping our curriculum up to date and also participating in our courses uh, as guest experts and supervising some projects. Um, there's some internship opportunities. And then we've just got lots of connections. We've got Mouse Belt here. They're super helpful with student organizations and connecting us to the right people for the right resources. Um, and we've got connections with all sorts of areas. One, one thing to point out is this Oregon Enterprise Blockchain Venture Studio. So we were a participant in that last year. That's kind of an incubator uh, for, or an accelerator for blockchain startups. And it's been fantastic because our students can really interact with those startups as they're getting up and running and see the whole process. And so that's an invaluable piece of our program. And, but there's a lot of opportunities like that for schools, you know, for other universities as well. There's a lot going on in the space and people are more than willing to connect. So in our board, we've got in this top half here, we've got a lot of people working in the blockchain space. And then we're home, Portland, Oregon's home to Intel and Nike. So we've got them and then a lot of others uh, on the business side that are supporting our program. And then we've created a student club and, and group as well, and they've been active. Uh, they're becoming more active. Uh, some of our students in the student club participated in, uh, in a couple of uh, national competitions in which they've won a couple, couple in a row. They're currently participating in a larger um, one with the DOD, the Department of Defense, uh, along with ASU, some ASU teams. And I think that one's about ready to wrap up, but those students are uh, part of the, the group of finalists. So they're doing well as well. They're doing well also. Uh, I'll mention also too here that our student clubs um, had a lot of support from Mouse Belt. Uh, they do a great job with what they do with uh, university clubs and they've introduced us to others that uh, can help kind of help our students launch and give us some ideas on what to do early on as a student club. And so that's been an integral uh, Part of our growth as a student organization as well. Yeah, and they'll play a bigger and bigger role in the program as we move forward. And so finally, here's a few, we'll wrap up with a few quotes from students. So here's one from Tatiana. She says, when I think back to the first term, when we had to deliver an elevator pitch. They had to deliver several elevator pitches. It's amazing how much more knowledgeable and confident I am in talking about blockchain technology. Um, Gabriella says, I've completely changed my career plans and I'm already interning with a blockchain startup. That's Everest and that's a great organization. They were part of the Venture Studio and we've, uh, yeah, we've been in close contact with them. <clears throat> and then finally, Jeff Gass, he was a community member who joined our courses. He said, I love the applied nature of the courses. I was able to use one of the final projects to create a business plan for a blockchain startup. And this was back in the fall. He's already, they're already in their second round of funding and currently creating partnerships with very large companies. So we've had tremendous success, far beyond what we had imagined when we started this program. And we think that other universities can do the same. It just takes some elbow grease and some effort. Um, resources are becoming more readily available. Someone's writing a textbook. Now uh, there's better materials every day uh, to teach courses like that and manage programs like this. So, so where do we go for more information, Christy? There we go. <laughs> there we go. So finally, here's our website again. Please don't hesitate to reach out and ask us any questions. You can contact us directly or you can just send a general email to blockchain PDX at pdx.edu. So thank you so much, Ashley, for the opportunity and we're really excited about this opportunity and about the conference in general. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing all the information. Uh, go ahead and um, 
stop screen sharing now. Um, I love that you guys went through exactly how you run your program. I really hope to be able to point uh, a lot of the professors and administrators that we've been working with for the last two years to what a robust program you have and how much information you just shared. I mean, anyone could probably watch this presentation and say, all right, I want to implement exactly that and, and try to do it at their school as well. Um, besides just directing un until more programs like this exist, hopefully we can direct people um, since this is open to anyone. You don't have to be a Portland State student. You don't have to be in Portland. Um, so that's awesome. I hope that uh, sharing this information will mean a lot more programs like this will pop up at the other universities that we work at, that this will be an opportunity for our students to actually get an accredited certificate um, to show the world that they, they, they know this stuff. Um, and just to kind of tie this conversation back into the general theme of the conference, uh, the one part that stood out to me was the conversation about how blockchain technology allows for a greater amount of collaboration than businesses are maybe used to. So I think that's something that like we can think about as how we're going to reimagine 2020 or how we we're, we're, how blockchain allows us to reimagine the future. Uh, is that we do need a lot more collaboration. We do need a lot more cross campus or cross department collaboration. Uh, I love how much uh, you guys are integrating CS students and business students, really pushing how important it is to, to have that collaboration and to have knowledge in a lot of different areas. We need schools to be collaborating with each other and, and that's what Mouse Belt University tries to help with. And then I hope uh, with a message like, like your guys uh, businesses both within blockchain and without uh, realize how much more collaboration is needed to really uh, derive value from these technologies and to really innovate. Great, yeah. And so, you know, and we're, we've got that open source kind of spirit too. That's why we wanted to share this information. Um, you know, it took us a long time and we worked with a lot of experts to kind of figure out how to design a program like this. And so, rather than trying to compete, you know, we're trying to do the open source team building ecosystem thing as well. Awesome. And that's what Mouse Belt's all about as well. You know, we uh, early on in, in our history, we were a development shop just building, uh, my, helping companies get to certain milestones or kickstart their projects. And we saw the same things coming up over and over again. People wanted a mobile wallet, people needed a block explorer. And we thought instead of reinventing the wheel, why don't we build a suite of open source tools? So we, we launched, spent about a hundred thousand dollars building a bunch of open source tools. And so I'll plug, I'll plug mouse belt utilities um, tools. Anyone is welcome to open, uh, uh, to fork off of those. They're all on GitHub um and and can really help people scale up their projects a lot quicker and and the same with the stuff we're doing on the education side the resources we're collecting and and the programs like yours to help people to scale up their their blockchain programs on their campuses a lot faster so thank you guys again so much um any last thoughts to share with our viewers i'm good i think we've covered a lot of ground here and yeah, you know, just thanks for Mouse Belt for putting it on, and uh, I'm sure it'll be a great program. I'm, I'm interested to, to see it, how it all rolls out. All right, guys, thanks again. This has been another uh, university segment of Reimagine 2020. Okay, thanks. Bye.